disclaimer, guidelines are provided by administration in KHSAA. As we are living in a pandemic, Our sports games will look a little different. Here is what to expect. When entering a football or volleyball game, your temperature will be taken, you will give your name and number, and pay for your ticket. It may not be this fast, but we can always hope. See this field? This is the practice field, and now known as the no hangout zone. I know everyone loves to have front row seats, <clears throat> more like standing at the fence blocking the view for others. However, no. spectators are not allowed to watch from the fence. Speaking of seating, bleachers will be taped off to where you can sit, much like our cheerleaders are showing, six feet and masked. We all love food, and don't worry, concessions will still be open. This is what the process will look like, but please have actual money, unlike shown here. Volleyball games will also have vending machines for the concessions. The cheerleaders will be standing between the bleachers. There will be more bleachers available, but this was filmed prior to them arriving. Don't forget to show your school spirit and wear your masks. For more information, check out our sports website, eminencewarriors.com. You will find more information about guidelines and senior night. Hi, this is the man of the street, and, to the, and today me and Joshua Clayton, I will be asking people what country they would like to visit around the world. So stay tuned. Hi, Adrian. If you could visit any country in the world, what would it be? Um, I'd probably say France. I'd want to visit the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower? Yes. Really? Yes. Fantastic. Hi. If you could visit any country in the world, what would it be? Puerto Rico. Why? Because I heard the beach down there is nice. The, the beach, okay. The great answer. Yeah. Alright, big guys. If you could visit any country in the world, what would it be? Uh, man, I have to say Nigeria for real, bro. Um, so it's nice down there, so I guess I have to try it out one day. Alright, let's go. <clears throat> Hi, Carter. If you could visit any country in the world, what would it be? Zimbabwe. Why? Is it Zimbabwe? That's it? Yes. Because it's what? How do you say it? Zimbabwe. And that's your country? Yeah. Alright. Hi, right, Kyle. If you could visit any country in the world, what would it be? Brazil. Why? It's beautiful. Is it really? It's just like me. <laughs> this interview will be interviewing. Miss Carol and she is actually our yearbook advisor and project lead the way teacher so we really hope you enjoy and the first question we will be asking her is how has these first few weeks of NTI or virtual learning been going for you? Eon days have been going really really well for me um, student participation has been at an all-time high. I have noticed that not only are students present and there in the Google Meets, but they're also virtually raising their hands and actively engaging in what we're doing in class. I'm also loving the block scheduling this year. If you've had me in the past, you know that I'm often talking until the last second <laughs> before the bell rings, and I finally feel like I have enough time with my classes. So I am very excited about the new schedule for this school year. Um, of course, I really do miss my students, so Eon Days haven't quite done it for me, um, but I know we'll be getting back to seeing each other really soon. And that brings us to our next question, and the next question from Miss Carol is, are you excited to be able to teach and see your students again? Absolutely. Um, as soon as it is deemed safe to do so, I definitely feel um, more prepared than ever um, for this school year. I naturally, with everything being closed and being in quarantine, um, my go-to activity has been preparing for this school year. So um, I've spent a lot of time doing that. And I've also, along the way, have learned some neat technology tools that I'm really excited to embed into my future classroom, even in person, um, so I can kind of create a flipped classroom with my kids. The third and final question for Miss Carol is, what is one thing you're excited about for this upcoming school year? And you can also say why. There are a lot of things that I'm really excited about this school year. Um, first and foremost is just seeing my students. Um, I can't wait to see them in person, whether you're a past student, a present student, or a future student, or a staff member. I miss all of you. You are my Eminence family, and I'm excited to see everyone. Um, another thing that I'm, I'm really pumped about this year is teaching Project Lead the Way. 
Um, I also get a larger focus on yearbook. I have two groups this year and I still get to keep one group of sixth graders. So very excited about that. Um, I'm also excited about my new classroom. So if you're looking to pop by and see how I'm doing, um, I am now going to be in the downstairs ed hub. So I get to be in the main hub of our school where I'll get to see everyone in passing, which is definitely um, different from years past where I used to be tucked in a corner. So uh, very excited to see everybody. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for checking in with me, Taylor. And I'm excited to see you really, really soon. Hello, and we are back with our teacher edition of our interview. So I'm actually interviewing this guy. I don't know if you know him. I don't know him too well. But um, the first question I'm going to be asking you is, so what's your role in the school right now? What are you doing? I am currently doing the third through five virtual learning. Okay. And how has these first few weeks of NTI been going? Uh, so far, it's been pretty chaotic. Uh, getting the kids used to the program. We are currently doing a new program. We are not doing Edgenuity. We are doing a program called Accelerated Learning, which I am getting used to and the kids are getting used to. So we're taking on a new obstacle here and we're getting used to it along with the virtual learning aspect of it. All right, uh, great answer. And the next question is, since I, would, I usually ask how, are you excited to be able to teach your students again? But since you're doing virtual, are you excited to keep teaching your students? I am, and unfortunately, I do not get to see my kids in face, but some I am gonna bring to my face, face to face, uh, about once or twice a week, maybe, I hope. But they will be, I will be seeing them in Google Meets once or twice a day, but that is it. We're going to be, we're going to stay virtual throughout the year. I understand and great answer once again. The last and final question is, what is one thing you're excited about to continue this virtual learning? I am just seeing what the kids get through this program. I am excited to be back at school and actually seeing the kids through Google Meets. I like to see the kids learn, I like to see their faces, I like to see their smiles, and seeing school going on again and that close. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so my first question is, what do you teach? Um, I teach sixth grade ELA, um, one section of 10th grade English, high school journalism and high school film is literature okay and then what made you become a teacher i wanted to become a teacher because of all the teachers that i had before me whether they were really amazing or whether they weren't so amazing um i was just really inspired by their ability to like push my talents to help me grow um, help me think about the world in ways that I hadn't before and especially for English doing that through like literature and reading and writing um, That's just something I want to be able to do for kids. And so that's why I became a teacher. That's really cool. Thank you uh, How is your online school going for your first year? Um, I would say I think it's going pretty well. It's always um, It's a challenge, but I like challenge so <laughs> that's been nice and I think what's great is just having honesty and openness with um, students and letting them know like we're all going through this together. We all need to have grace for one another. My internet might go out, your internet might go out, um, but we're still going to like push through. And it's really given me a lot of ways to consider how am I best serving the needs of all of my students and um, making sure my directions are clear. And if someone's absent, making sure that they are able to get caught up in a way that's meaningful and not just like check mark I did this one worksheet and so it's really um, allowed me to develop that a lot more and something I'm gonna take into uh, in-person teaching yeah I mean yeah I can't be a rough with all the internet issues but like we've been making the most of it mm-hmm uh, where did you teach last um, last I taught in El Dorado Arkansas um, at El Dorado High School so for the past two years that's where I've been teaching okay and then one final question. What are just some fun facts about yourself? Um, fun facts about myself. I'm an Eminence graduate, 
So I graduated from Eminence in 2012, um, and I graduated with 29 other people. So very small class. I was here right when the Ed Hub stuff was getting started. It hadn't been built yet or anything. Um, so that's one fun fact. Once during homecoming, um, we had a rap battle, and I wrote and performed the rap and won that. So we won the spirit stick that year. Um, what else? I love to cook and I'm working my way through Chrissy Teigen's cookbook currently, just trying to cook all of those recipes. Um, and I like coffee and cats. <laughs>
Not bad. I think I cooked them a tiny bit too long. But I don't know. They're really good. Yeah. Yay me. Thanks for watching. <laughs> my name is Michaela and I'm the senior this year. Um, today for my fall crafting video, we are going to be making fall paintings out of fabric, toilet paper, and branches. Um, pretty easy and simple, so keep watching and enjoy. Okay, so what you're going to need is two toilet paper. Well, you can have uh, as many as you want, but one for uh, making just one. And then you'll need two fabric. Um, I just got one yard, so it can make multiple. And then you'll need two branches, a pin, and tape, and you also need scissors. And so you're going to take your fabric and you're going to take off the um, sticker thing. Uh, make sure you get it all off. Um, yeah. So now I'm taking my fabric, I'm unwrapping it, and I'm going to take uh, the cardboard out of it. Um, and you just want to measure it. Um, I just did like a fourth of it, and I cut it. So now we're going to take our toilet paper um, and we're going to unwrap it. Um, so I just unwrapped a couple of times and then you're just going to kind of mess it up. Whatever you did unwrap, you're going to mess it up um, so you can get the shape of the pumpkin. And after you mess it up, you're going to wrap it back around. Um, remember it needs to be messy just to get the shape. and. Okay, so now you're going to bring your fabric back out. Um, so I ended up using the other part of the fabric because um, it was kind of small. So we're going to measure it while we um, put it around the pumpkin, well, the toilet paper. And yeah, we're going to snip, snip, snip and cut off the excess. Okay, now it's time to form it. Um, you're gonna take your pin and you're just gonna like jam it in the fabric and you're just gonna wrap it all around, jam it in, and try to get the shape too, so. And so this is what it looks like so far. You're gonna take your branch and you're gonna stick it right in the middle. And then you're going to take some more toilet paper. I took like two squares and um, you're going to like roll it up and, and then you're going to tie it around the branch. You could also use felt or another type of fabric. I just used toilet paper. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my other fabric and we're going to make the other pumpkin. And right now I'm just trying to get the right measurement, which it's kind of just a see and go thing. Um, that's what I did. And that's my other one. So a trick would be just to move the fabric around after you already had it in there just to get a nice shape. So this one turned out. Um, a lot better than the other one. Okay, so now I'm putting it on this thing that my grandma uses, and it's right by the plant, so it's cute.
Okay, so here's the finishing products. I hope you enjoyed this video and make them yourself. They're pretty easy.